Hello guys welcome to my humble YouTube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. The Saint of War, Tensura XDXD, by Kischer Chapter, 2. In the sixth heaven which should be the home of the seraphs, there was one complete exception to said rule, and that is Seal himself. Despite not being a seraph, and more so an angel, he very much do lived in the sixth heaven, with his own room to spare as well, of course he himself doesn't really used it far too often, since Gabriel very much liked it for the two of them to sleep together for as long as possible. Because of that, Seal decided to make his room to be his own personal workshop of sorts, in which he goes to do some private training, which Michael noticed and decided to renovate the entire room to fit his needs, which was something that Gabriel apologized exceedingly about it. In said room of his, it was modeled after Japanese dojos with it being made out of wood and tatami, with it being very big for room for a single person with it being 500 square meters. With this, Seal, with a wooden sword in hand then remembered every basic sword technique, basic movement technique and basic CQC altogether, and with that he moved and started training. Basic sword technique mixed with basic movement techniques and both supported by basic CQC. Slash slash parry stab weave block slash stab. Parry slash slash door opens, seal, oh, you're training, sorry, carry on. Gabriel came in the room to tell seal the good news, but upon seeing seal was concentrating on training, she decided to quiet down and use magic to block out outside noise, so that seal could very well concentrate on his training. Gabriel now seeing CL's movements, she couldn't help but be both happy for his progressed, but also very sad at such fast pace of growth and progression. If he keeps this pace, it would be almost over in our play of mother and child, with it now becoming more in line with a mother and teenager now. And from what I heard, a teenager doesn't really want to hang out with their parents all that much compared to when they are children, Gabriel thought sadly while looking at the ever beautiful sword play that was performing before her very eyes. Every time he swang his sword and body around, with each movement, it becomes clearer, more precise, more coordinated, more perfected in a way. It was such a sheer display of skill and talent, to continuously improve with the sword, and it very much left Gabriel in awe, and so was the rest of the seraphs that decided to see what was going on inside CL's room which was far too quiet since they knew he should be training in said room, and upon seeing Gabriel putting on a barrier in CL's display of swordsmanship. And before they knew it, they just silently marveled at the sheer display of swordsmanship for an hour straight, with no one stopping or growing concerned for Seal, who by now was completely steaming in heat, with visible steams coming out of his body, with his clothes being completely drenched in his own sweat, with it now tightly hugging his body. Which did cause Raphael and some of the female seraphs that was there to blush, which did cause the male seraphs to give them a critical look and a disappointed look as well, fully knowing that they have developed a crush towards him or fallen for him. The only one that wasn't blushing was Gabriel who viewed Seal as her own son, and also didn't notice the intense emotions that they displayed towards Seal as well since her entire focus was on Seal and Seal alone. When it looks like Seal was finishing, they were ready to talk to him, but before they could even ready themselves, Mana started to run across his entire body and his surroundings, and sensing it was a powerful attack, they just brazed themselves for it, and when he was about to attack, it caused Uriel, Sandalfon and Remiel to strongly react to it. Wah! His! Gasp! Asterisk! Right before anyone could question them, Seal slashed. Slash boom the barrier and the surrounding walls was all destroyed or cracked open, the shockwave from the explosion-like sound exploded everyone, causing the seraphs to winch in the sudden shockwave that they weren't prepared for. But everyone's reaction was the same they were in shocked. For the move that Seal used, was a powerful sword technique, which is a technique that combines every sword technique in a single technique, slash, stab, block, parry, guard break in a single technique making it one of the strongest techniques someone could acquire no matter the level of their power. Of course, no ordinary person could ever do such a thing, because of that, one would also need a master class mana manipulation to compensate for the lack of time to perform every move, but even then, Everything needs to be timed just right for it to work, and of course in a high octane fight or a series of movements like Seal did in an hour, no one would be able to successfully pull it out in their first try. But before they could ponder more, they suddenly reacted to a thud and then looked and saw Seal flat in the ground unconscious. Seal. 
Gabriel was the first to react, with her rushing to her baby's side and completely dousing him with numerous healing spells that she knows of. To this, it caused the others to react again and quickly went to Ciel's side. Gab, don't let your emotions cloud your skills, use your grace to find out what's wrong with him. Raziel said to Gabriel, sure you maybe hesitate to say it to her with his current tone of voice, but considering her power, she could very easily deduce what is wrong with Seal, and with no one saying anything to him, it seems that they are also of same mind. Gabriel hearing that, instantly used her grace, which is biology. Her grace, biology, is a grace that allows her innate mastery of biology and the ability to quickly identify what is wrong with a person, with her also being able to quickly create a healing spell to any form of injuries or sickness, and the added ability to create any form of poisons as well. Using said grace to seal, she was able to quickly identify what is wrong with seal, and seeing that it wasn't severe and just plain old exhaustion, cause her to sigh in relief. There isn't anything wrong with seal, he's just exhausted. Hearing her diagnosis, it caused the others to sigh in relief as well, for that fact. With that, Gabriel quickly sent Seal to her room to recover from his exhaustion. Gabriel Pav while my baby was asleep, I didn't stay near him for long, since there is a lot of papers to sign, especially for the sole ownership of Heaven's Library for five years to him as well. Because of the abilities and skills that could be learned in the Heaven's Library, and with said library only able to hold a single individual in said library, because of that, everyone in the Angels and Exorcist has a queue in said library for about three months, for the first two if they could acquire a grace and the remaining month to train in said library, and with Seal now having full ownership of said library for five years, then many things must be arranged for said thing to happen smoothly. Of course, since something could still happen to Seal while I signed papers, Raphael, Regul and Sariel decided to volunteer to take care of him if something did happen. Of course I happily accepted their proposal since it would make sure that Seal would be safe in his current state. Of course hearing the news that Seal would have full ownership of the library for five years did raise some voices, especially the exorcist who felt it was favoritism at its finest, which is something that I wouldn't really call out for, since this is favoritism after all. But unlike them however, the angels very much agreed with the decision. Since unlike the exorcist, they have seen just how talented Seal is, and quickly realized this was a way to quickly raise Ciel's own capabilities and talents, which would in terms strengthen the faction immensely, especially since it only took him a week for him to reach a master class or even a grand master class swordsmanship with him fusing every move together in a single move, attacked, and with him awakening and evolving into an enlightened human, caused them to support the boy as well. To them, the boy named Seal is an individual that must be nurtured for the betterment of the faction as a whole. Sure it is favoritism, and dismays the needs of other people, but to them, it is a necessary sacrifice that must be meant for their faction to survive and thrive in this new and evolving world as a whole. Then apart from that, because of the trio of seraphs are now just taking care of my seal, I was forced to take care of their work as well, which is something that I don't want to do, since their sectors are something that I'm not fond of, since I'm the head of foreign affairs after all. Raphael is the head of research and development, with her sector right now was fully perfecting the Brave Saints technology, the interdimensional room which would allow angels to procreate without the chance of becoming a fallen angel, the training cabins that would allow one to train and get stronger by either creating holograms and changing the gravity of the area as well. Regule is the head of trade, with her being the one to mostly discuss about imports and exports to other factions, pantheons, things like holy crystals is an item only found on heaven, with the addition of grimoires as well with them being the main holder of most of the grimoires in the world, since they make them thanks to the library giving them the knowledge and skills. Sariel is the head of finances, with her mostly being the one who allocates budgets and finances of the other ministries, and the one who also manages other public spending as well, with her also being the one in charge of constructing public buildings and structures as well. With all of this piled up in my table, it caused me to sign in annoyance and despair at the amount of work that I needed to do as of late, of course Ragwell's work was rather easy for me compared to the other two since trade and foreign affairs work is almost hand in hand after all. As for the other two though, that was the difficult part of this, but considering their personalities, I could somewhat do what they would normally do though, with the difficult part being on how to budget the entire thing. Considering Raphael's personality, the priority should be the training cabins, since with the chances of war between factions, pantheons would very much increased, we need to finish the training cabins soon, 
so that the exorcists and angels would be able to train and get stronger, after that would be the completion of the Brave Saints technology as well. The Brave Saints, a form of technology that Raphael made more than 700 years ago, was still in the most part, incomplete one could say, despite the technology accomplishing what it set out to do, which is to convert humans into angels to increase their population, there are still problems with said technology, or more like limitations and one of them would be the ability to evolve past the threshold of a throne. Angels, much like humans has evolutionary pathway, with being the following power, virtue, dominion, throne, cherub and seraphim. The power is the equivalent of a low and mid-ranked angel in the world, with the peak of power being a peak mid to low high class angel. The virtue is the equivalent to upper low to peak high class angel. The dominion is the low ultimate to low archangel level of power. The throne is the archangel to above stage, in this stage it is possible for an angel to acquire a level of power and strength comparable to that of the equivalent super devil or super angel to them. With Michael if he truly wanted to could cross that threshold if he truly tried and gone go all out in terms of power, and in truth the ones that have been called the four great seraphs are those that have reached the max of throne, with us being able to reach the equivalent of a super angel if we used our power to its fullest potential. The cherub is the stage that only two angels has reached in history of our race, and that is both Michael and Lucifer, when Lucifer was an angel he was in his prime, with him being of the cherub class which already classified him superior to that of the super angels and devils that exist today, and in fact his level of power is so high that he was classified as having the same rank or even higher than the heavenly dragons. But after the civil war in heaven and the damages that both Lucifer and Michael inflicted on each other, the two was forced to revert back to the throne stage, with Lucifer even after the end of his life has been trying to return back to his past glory, and as for Michael, he has been steadily returning back to his past glory as well with his soul being nearly repaired allowing him to become a cherub once more. The last and final evolution of the angel race is the seraphim. With said stage being told by the god of the Bible to be on the same level of power or even surpassed as of dragon god class entities, because of that, back then both Michael and Lucifer very much tried to reach said level of power, but after losing their power, Michael decided to stop his progress of power, while honing his own existing skills, while Lucifer still continued down that path of power to reach the same level as his own father. The reason why I explained the stages is because it is part of the limitations of the brave saints and what a race truly is. The brave saints is to change the physical race of the person it is used upon, and that is mostly humans themselves or other races that wanted to join their side, but there are two types of races and that is the physical and spiritual races. The physical race is about the body and their natural abilities. While the spiritual race is the soul, the evolution of the angels would mostly affect the physical race, with it being more in the dominion stage, and that is where it ends, for the stages above those wouldn't just affect the physical race but also the spiritual race as well. Since in order to reach the throne stage, one would need to change their spiritual race, which is almost impossible to do, since the spiritual race is the soul itself, so changing it would be essentially changing the most key important piece in a person, and so right now, Raphael and the other researchers have been trying to fix this issue, to allow the brave saints to become throne stage angels themselves and above as well. It's because of that, it is important for the brave saints to be completed, so that they would have legged up towards the devils, who I'm sure purposely kept theirs to not be completed so that none of the reincarnated devils to become a Satan themselves. And with the devils being having less potent magical energy than us angels, then the peak of an reincarnated devil would be the peak of ultimate class, go over that grade, they needed to master all of their existing skills to an even higher level of power and fully acquire true master level to even begin to be able to fight individuals above their initial ranks. But still though, for there to be so many papers to sign, why are there even doing so much? Most of them are even be considered to be useless to this day and age. I mentally screamed and made a mental note to get an appointment with my sisters, since many of the things that they're doing could be considered useless because of the current political climate, especially with Raphael's division. Why do we need this? Birth. Control. I thought strongly to this strangely named and constructed drug that Raphael was said interested in making such drug. Of course because of that, I just thought back to their personalities and arranged their budgets and priorities, the interdimensional room and birth control would definitely be last place, 
the Brave Saints technology would be second place, since said technology could be completed in the possible war, and the training cabins being top priority, since we need strong soldiers this instance since a possible war is pretty close. Hollow Diamond Hollow Diamond Hollow Diamond Hollow Diamond Hollow Diamond. Uriel Pav. Swordsmanship. It has always fascinated me, to everyone, swordsmanship is the art of killing with a sword or a blade, an art that could only be enjoyed by those that wants to kill as efficiently as possible. But to said description, to me that is wrong and far too biased of an opinion. Swordsmanship to me is a beautiful art filled with strong passion and beautiful strings of slashes that is interconnected together to build a proper sword technique or sword style. That's the reason, that I very much liked hanging out with Remiel and Sandalfon, since they too also heavily used weapons like a sword, because of that and their specialization, I could very well train and spar with them to fix my weaknesses to other weapons and improve my overall skills and techniques with the sword. Ha! I swang my sword downwardly while remembering the beautiful display of swordsmanship by seal. It was beautiful, practical and above all, so refined without any form of weaknesses, it was a display of swordsmanship that only those that stood at the top could only replicate. You know, you wouldn't be able to replicate what seal did with just training right. Sandalfon who was watching me train, suddenly voiced out to me, causing me to look at him confusion. What do you mean? I clearly saw it before my eyes, if I trained hard enough, I'm sure that even I could replicate said feat as well, I was confident that I could do it as well, that beauty and perfection, I was sure of it. But it seems that Sandalfon wasn't on my side on this. No, you wouldn't be able to replicate it or even be able to do it, and if you did, it wouldn't be as satisfying to you or to anyone really, what you need is not training and skills, but a sudden burst of realization more than anything. Sandalfon informed me of what I needed to acquire. And alas, I couldn't understand what he meant. Uriel, your greatest weakness right now is that you don't have a proper foundation to evolve further from. You always stay at the foundation that you make for yourself and don't try to strengthen your foundation or increase your depths in swordsmanship. If you want to reach greater heights, I advise you to look deeper into yourself to get stronger and better in swordsmanship. Dot, 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 slash, dot swish asterisk in the training grounds uriel who has been earnestly training throughout the day that he even forgot to congratulate and set off seal when he entered the library was currently standing before a wall that was sliced cleanly to the point that there was no form of resistance at all i see so i was only holding myself back after all uriel thought while looking at the cut wall and the wooden sword that he used to do it i can still get stronger single quote Sandalfon who was watching Uriel train could only smirk at the sudden realization that the fellow angel has made for himself. Single quote. Good, it seems that he was able to properly build his own foundation, with this he should be able to evolve and get stronger as well. With that thought, Sandalfon then went towards Uriel, who then turned towards him. How long was I training? Quote. A month. Seal has entered the library a month ago. Uriel hearing this, could only sigh sadly at not being able to say his goodbyes for his disciple. Too bad that I couldn't say my words to him, to this Sandalfon only let out a chuckle. You don't have to worry about that, before he left for the library, he went here to say his words, but seeing you training seriously and being absorbed by it, he decided to not disturb you and continue his training, Uriel hearing this could only look towards the direction of the library in a smile and grateful one at that, upon hearing CL's consideration. Well he made the right call, since I'm sure I wouldn't have reached this point if he decided to say something to me in my trance-like state. Well what did you tell him for me? Quote. Study holy magic first so that he could get a grace himself. After that study swordsmanship of the Bible pantheon. Well fairly standard. Boom. Dot. Swish. Asterisk. A pillar of light suddenly appeared in the sixth heaven, causing all angels and residing exorcists to look up and noticed and looked on in wonder at such a sight, and as for the ones that was old enough, they could only looked on with a knowing smirk on their face. Oh you got to be kidding me. For him to acquire a grace in a month. Uriel voiced out his amazement of said feet, with Sandalfon just shrugging his shoulder. Let's continue our training, we don't want to be surpassed by him anytime soon right? Uriel hearing this, only readied his sword against Sandalfon, who readied his light gun and short sword against his fellow archangel. Dot, 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 dot. A month ago, 
The heavens library is a place that exists between the sixth and seventh heaven, with it existing directly between the two layers of heaven, with the only way to access it, is to arrive at the heavens gate that is directly connected to it in the sixth layer of heaven. The heavens library is the most treasured and powerful tool that heaven currently has. With it being stockpile with everything that the God of the Bible knows and having a system, machine that allows it to increase its knowledge pull by either scanning the entire world of its knowledge or by advancing itself to acquire newer and better knowledge as well. Which is the reason why it is by far in a way, more than 300 to 400 years ahead of the current world technology, and with it being able to grant individuals graces, it is the greatest and most important object in heaven's arsenal. Of course because of this strong points, it has its own limitation and weaknesses, like its limitation of only housing a single individual at all times, and it can only operate five years maximum and needing two month break after that for it to be operational again. So it's not really much of a limitation, and of course because of the power it holds, it is one of the extreme few things that the heaven faction keeps secret, with the only ones knowing it being the leaders of Grigory and some of the original demon nobles that deserted and the ones that they told them about the secret of said library. The heavens libraries insides is quite grand, of course in the outside view, it is nothing more than a box building with a fancy door, but inside it though, there stood the thing that made it so grand in the first place. The inside was almost blank void, with the light sources being the numerous galaxy-like light sources that floats all around the room, which granted enough light to lit up the entire room, apart from that, there was also numerous books that floated around and upon closer inspections, there showed numerous titles in those covers like, basic swordsmanship, basic leadership, and etc etc, with there being more things to be seen. Seal who has entered this place, with just a bag full of clothes only, was mesmerized by the structure of the library. This is truly a one-of-a-kind object, Seal thought while comparing to the other libraries there is in heaven, and he quickly came to a conclusion that this library quickly and very easily top his coolest library list. And right before he could take a step forward, a holographic screen appeared in front of him. Are you here for a grace? If so, please press Y. Y, N. Note. Please take caution, if one press N, then they would no longer be able to acquire a grace ever again, and pressing Y, they would acquire a two-month period of training, if one is able to complete the two-month training they would acquire a grace, and if not, they wouldn't acquire a grace. Seal seeing this, decided to look at the library once more and then pressed Y on the screen before him. Right after that, a magic circle formed below him and started to scan him, causing another holographic screen to appear again. The user is a human, enlightened, with the user's energy pool being that of normal mana, adding a month and a half in the time limit, and adding holy energy and holy energy conversation in the pool of knowledge that one must acquire and complete as well. Seeing all of this, Seal then turned towards the books that was slowly arranging itself in front of him, with all of them numbering in the hundreds of books, and from what little he saw in every last one of the books, he was able to guess that all of them were all arranged in mind of novice, beginner, intermediate, advanced, master, grandmaster, true grandmaster and true enlightened. From what I heard from the others, I need to fully master holy magic to its peak, both in practicality and theoretically, and I need to do it in two months, but considering what the screen said, I have an extra month and a half in the time limit. Yeah this is almost impossible to do, Seal thought, while remembering the conditions of acquiring a grace and deemed it almost impossible. The only reason why he didn't consider it being impossible, is that there are numerous individuals that was able to learn and acquire a grace with the most notable being the Archangels and the Demon Nobles as well. So he was sure it is doable, but it was such an extremity that it is almost impossible to do. Well might as well do it now. With that, he then pressed Y on the screen and right after that. Arg! A sudden pain hit his head, causing him to clutch it, to try to ease the sudden pain that hit his head, but then he quickly realized something as well in the midst of this pain of his. Wait! All of my knowledge and skills in holy magic is escaping me. Single quote. He thought horrified on what he just found out. He first thought, the reason why the archangels and the demon nobles of old was able to acquire the grace is that they practiced to the point of achieving true grandmaster or true enlightened, before actually going to the library themselves to acquire a grace. But after finding out, that no matter how skilled and knowledgeable you are in holy magic, all of it would be for nothing for it would just strip them of said knowledge and skills anyways, and by the time the pain has ended, 
all of his knowledge, experience and skills in holy magic was now gone. Then a timer appeared, which perfectly said the time limit that he was on to be able to acquire a grace. To this, Seal rested a little bit, and then sighed in relief since he has now fully recovered from his headache and then turned towards the book that was presented to him, the difference between mana and holy energy. Seal now remembered once again, that he wouldn't just learn how to use said skills, but also everything about it as well, since he also needs perfect theoretical knowledge as well, with that he then grabbed the book and began reading. Hollow diamond hollow diamond hollow diamond hollow diamond hollow diamond. It has been a few hours since he started reading, and in truth, thanks to his time with both Gabriel and Raphael, he was able to develop a fast reading ability, allowing him to finish the thick book in minutes. But right now, because of the contents of the book that he was reading, he was currently hyper-analyzing everything, with him trying to understand all of it, what its strengths, weaknesses and everything in between. And after reading about five books about holy energy, he was now ready to convert not a few, or most of it, but all of his mana into holy energy right away. From what the book told, it's dangerous for a human to transform one's mana into holy energy all out once, but to those that could do it, would be able to perfectly do holy magic without any risk of mistake. But this also makes it so that I'm no longer capable of using ordinary magic though, Seal thought, but he didn't really mind it though. Luckily for him though, one of the books that was assigned to him, was teachings of how to perfectly manipulate one's mana at will, of course it was just an introduction and at a novice level, with it just discussing on how it should look like and the result of it. And of course, there was also books that would allow him to learn the beginner, intermediate and advanced versions, but considering the time limit, he decided to forego said books now, and decided to continue read the mana and holy energy conversion, and after some time, he was able to perfectly memorize the procedure and what must be done. But because of him not being knowledgeable and skilled in terms of mana manipulation, only being in the novice level, but him being the genius that he is, he decided to compare said material together and cross-reference between the two and make his own guesses and theories to be able to perfectly make everything perfectly connect between the two of them, and with that complete he started. Fortunately for him, because of the construct of the entire library being of holy in nature, and living in the most holy place in the entire world and interacted with numerous holy entities for the most of his life, he has became quite familiar with the signature of holy energy and with said energy being quite readily filled with holy energy as well, he was able to smoothly proceed. With that, he then expelled all of his mana in the surroundings, which proceeded to color the entire room into a rainbow color, and with that he then manipulated the existing holy energy in the library and then mixed them together, which formed an infinity symbol right above him, with that he then slowly, but surely converge all of it, into a single point, to the point being the size of a small marble. The marble was ousing power and danger that it would terrify beings of high and below classes. The marble shape object, is currently colored gold, with it also releasing a bright golden aura around itself, and with that, it then started to drift into liquid and started to land on top of seal, and the more landed into him, the more and more the liquid increased in volume, with it now currently surrounding him fully, which fully betrayed the amount of liquid in such a small marble. When the marble was no more, Ciel's body was currently completely covered in a golden aura that was so thick it made it appear that it was a solid object despite it not being one itself, and with that it then started to enclose Ciel's body to the point it has not completely structured itself in the shape of Seal. But this wasn't for show, for Seal was doing something else as well, since he desired strength above all else, to show to heaven his gratefulness for taking him in, in his time of need, he decided to try to make himself even more powerful than before, by using the available knowledge that he was able to acquire for himself in secret. When Gabriel couldn't actually come and watch Seal train, Seal was able to talk to the Archangels and read books about advanced biology, to this end, the Archangels themselves just agreed, not seeing anything wrong with it, and also collectively agreed to keep it a secret from Gabriel herself, the reason for this, was because of the desire that he had. Because of him wanting to become stronger, to the point that everyone wouldn't underestimate him, he started to look into ways to become even more powerful, and in this case, he started to look into the earliest method he came up with, right before he learned race evolutions, and that was biological enhancements or magical enhancements itself. He originally planned to use the holy energy in heaven to enhance himself in physical capabilities and also hopefully acquire holy energy, 
but after experiencing an evolution into an enlightened and acquiring mana himself, he started to dismiss it, but after arriving in the library and finding out about mana and holy energy conversion ritual, which sounded and function almost the same as the method he himself created. Because of this, he decided to do his method of enhancement, because of the extreme similarity between the two methods to the point it almost achieved the same thing, if the method that he found in heaven's library enhances one's mana and changed it into holy energy, then the method he created was to turn a material body, or in this case a human, into a spiritual life form. With that, with holy energy as dense as this one, that is currently surrounding him completely, he then started to make said holy energy into sharp needles and then pierce through his enlightened body and slowly inject holy energy in his body, with it now resting in his blood, his veins, his muscles, his skin, and his vital organs was all bathed in his holy energy. At first, when he calculated the chances of it working, he thought it would only has chance of about 20 to 30 percent chances of success, because of this, he only planned in going with this method when he was sure it was about 60 to 70 percent success. The reason as for why it was so low, was because the holy energy that he would be using is of foreign substances, making it a dangerous procedure if he were to go with said method, since the reason for low success rate was because said holy energy is never his to begin with, and the only reason why it's so high to begin was because it is holy energy, making it one of the safest energy one could use and manipulate. But now, acquiring his own mana and converting it into holy energy, just the fact its base was his own mana that was produced from his own body and has changed into holy energy, already made his method to be a 90 to 100% success rate, and with that he went with it. In moments that would only be seen as an impossibility, because of the implications of said technique being unleashed, Seal calmly and expertly went with the method that he created to make himself even more powerful than before, and in this instance, he was burning away a large part of his holy energy at once to fully enhance himself and make himself a fully-fledged spiritual life form. It was such an impossibility that occurred in this lonely library, but it was almost like God was truly helping him in achieving an impossibility and making it possible for him. A human cannot become a fully-fledged spiritual life form, with the only way for them to do it, is to evolve and become a fully-fledged and completed saint first before a human could even dream of said outcome, but now, right here in this lonely library, a human that has just reached the enlightened stage, was now evolving even further beyond his reached and reaching a place that he should be able to reach at this current time. With the help of aura manipulation, Seal was able to effectively raise his body's adaptability to the holy energy that is currently existing throughout his body, and since this holy energy originated from himself, he was able to very easily absorb this energy quickly and effective, and with the enhanced adaptability that was raised, his body has started to change rapidly, but considering it being holy magic, it was able to negate his pain receptors, which he was quite happy about. It was a process that took hours to complete because of Seal wanting to fine-tune everything, but it was a decision that he was happy about, for the rewards it would grant him would be quite worth it for him, and in the last stages, the golden aura that surrounded him, was now completely solid with it completely covering him, with it creating a fine outline of his figure. Crack. The golden shell, that made him look like a beautiful made golden statue, was now starting to crack, with the first place it started, was in his face. Crack. Then to his neck and chest. Crack. His arms. Crack. Then to his legs. The more and more cracks that appeared, the more and more connected it became and then. Thud. The place in which his eyes rested, the golden shell cracked and then fell down to the ground, which revealed a beautiful white skin underneath said shell that was made, and when said eyelid opened, it revealed the most beautiful and mesmerizing shade of gold in the entire history of the universe. This eye, then looked around for a minute, and then shut closed once again, with that the golden statue-like state, then started to shake, with more and more cracks appearing all around the golden shell. With that, crack, 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 thud, with that, the golden shell that originally constrained one's movements, has now officially been destroyed, with the shells all coming down to the ground, revealing the current state of Seal Tempest. Seal, who has always been extremely beautiful and handsome, to the point of being able to make even angels and archangels blushed at his appearance as a child, which was magnified when he reached the enlightened stage, with his appearance already making the angels desire him even more now. But after completing his metamorphosis however, his appearance experience and drastic appearance boost and aura around him. If before, he was the pinnacle of mortal beauty, 
with him somehow perfectly merging being both the most beautiful and handsome person in the world, with it just being enhanced even further by his awakening into an enlightened individual. But now, as a fully fledged spiritual life form, his appearance has been enhanced even more, his white skin has become very tantalizing white, to the point of others wanting to touch it and wanting to feel its warmth, with said skin being absolutely perfect without any blemishes. His already perfect and beautiful golden eyes, has became even more beautiful, with it being downright mesmerizing and hypnotic in nature, for his eyes is by far the most beautiful shading of gold color in the entire existence of the universe. His long blue hair, which represents the clear blue sky, has now became even more beautiful and refined, with there being a touch of white and golden stars in his long beautiful azure-colored hair. His lips, which has always been tantalizing to the point of even making archangels like Raphael, want to claim lips and experience, was now even more tantalizing, with it's color changing into a beautiful and healthy perfect shade of rosy red. As for his body, because of the golden shell has been destroyed. So too was his clothes was destroyed as well, which made him be in his birthday suit, which revealed his body, his body was lean, with it appearing in appearance that he hasn't done any form of physical training at all, but that didn't detract any form of shown of power, since despite lacking muscle, he himself was showing and releasing a presence of power and respect, causing those that would see him now, would be incapable to ignore his presence, despite his age. Seal, who has completed his metamorphosis, has now completely changed in both in a biological sense. And in a power sense, he has completely given up his physical makeup to become a spiritual life form, causing him to lose his natural human lifespan, but also granted him an even greater physique, which enhanced him even further, especially with his speed and his ability to manipulate his own naturally occurring energy as well, since as a spiritual life form, he would be more in tune with supernatural and naturally occurring energy as well. Because of that, right now, he could be said to be at the peak of ultimate class hood and is on his way on entering low archangel class in terms of power. Seal, who has awakened from his metamorphosis, just looked at his body and assess on what he has acquired. My body is immensely more powerful now with my body also being more easier to move in as well, with the control of energy being far more easier as well. Dot. The only thing that I truly lose in this stage, is my ability for reproduction and some of my energy levels as well, with it dropping to about a peak high class, but considering what I have acquired, this is quite satisfying of a sacrifice. With that, Golden Aura came out of him current body and then formed around him, which successfully recreated the clothes that he was wearing moments ago.